Good morning. Welcome everybody to worship here at Ascension. A special welcome to guests and visitors who are with us in person and maybe if you're joining us online. It's good that we're here because here we're all about Jesus, about what God has done for us, about the forgiveness that he has given us, about how he loves us. Today we get to continue though in our new worship and sermon series that really is who we are here at Ascension. This is our identity. This is what we want to be in here, what we want people to know out there. We will live life together. Do you remember last week how we talked about how we're not aiming for shallow or just tiny interactions? We want deep, real relationships where we build each other up, where we encourage each other. Today, we get to answer the question, though, that uh, is why? <laughs> why is that who we are? Why is that what we want to do? Why is that we want people in our community to know about us? Why? Today is part one. Today we live life together for Jesus. When we know what Jesus has done for us, that changes who we are and we can't do anything but live our lives for him. That's the focus of our service this morning. Everything you're going to need is printed out for you up on the screens or you'll see it on your screen at home. May God bless our worship this morning. Our opening song is For the Cause, a great song that reminds us that what we do is for Jesus, to share Jesus with people in our world, for people to see Jesus through us. Let's sing. We begin our worship here at Ascension with words that remind us of what God has done for us in our baptisms. When God washed us clean of our sins, he made us his. He made us part of his family, 
So when we say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we know that we are together at one with him. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue by admitting that we need help. That we have not lived up to God's standard of what he calls us to live. That we have failed in so many ways in our lives. We admit our sins to God, not because it's good for us, but that we know that we need help. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trust me in him, I pray. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue by doing one awesome thing. Because we're forgiven in Jesus, we have the responsibility and the opportunity to pray to God, to talk to him. So we join together. We pray. Lord God, we thank you that you have made us at one with you. You are the reason that we are back together with you instead of being far away and separated from you. Help us to know this reality and this truth, and then move us to live for you and to see our Savior Jesus in everything we say and think and do through him, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. As we gather together each week, the focus of our service is one part of the Bible, one part of God's word, where we get to dig a little bit deeper, where we get to let God tell us about our Savior, Jesus. Today it comes from 1 Peter chapter 3. And 1 Peter 3 is this awesome section where God tells Christians, this is what your life can look like. This is how you live. This is who you live for. This is what you do. But at the very end of it, the focus that we're going to see today is, We do this because of what Jesus has done for us. Oh, first, sorry. No, first, uh, we're going to be doing our children's message. So uh, not different from the sermon, not anything that's going to be a change, but hopefully a little thing, kids, for everybody that's here to get you interested to hearing the sermon and hopefully something that uh, might make you think about what we're talking about a little bit. And today, kids, today I want you guys to... To help me with something, I have a pair of glasses here, and I want you guys to tell me if you think these glasses are going to be good and helpful for me, or if these glasses aren't going to be so great. Could you do that? Yeah? You guys ready? Okay. Here, thank you, Aiden. Here's my pair of glasses. All right. What do you think? Pretty cool, right? I like the blue. I really like the blue. What do you guys think? Are these glasses going to be really helpful? really good? Or are these glasses eh, not quite so good? What do you think today? You don't think so, Nora. Okay, well, actually, I'm going to be honest. I can't even tell if anybody's raising their hand to say anything right now. I can't see any of you guys. Hmm. So if, if I might try to drive my car back home later and I put these glasses on, are they going to be helpful? No. What would happen? Uh Uh-oh, bad things are going to happen, right? But but these glasses might be helpful because what do you see on these glasses? What's there? The cross, right? 
So right now, what do I see more than anything else? It's right in front of my eyes. It's the cross. And every time we see a cross, what does that make us think of? Jesus and what Jesus has done for us. Today in our sermon, we're going to talk about one thing that God has done for us is it kind of looks like this, is that God makes us think about Jesus, that God helps us see things through like a Jesus glasses, through a Jesus lens. And when we live our lives, we can't help but see Jesus and what Jesus has done for us. In the sermon, listen and think about how God calls us to live for him, to live these Christian lives. But first, we have to see it through Jesus and what he's done for us. Let's join together and pray. Lord God, we thank you that you have given us our Savior, Jesus, that you have forgiven us, that you love us. Help us to see life through you and what you've done for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to continue with 1 Peter 3 again. This list of Christian living, what it can look like. We live life together for Jesus. Why? Because of what he's done for us. Here's what Peter writes to Christians. Finally, all of you, be like-minded. Be sympathetic. Love one another. Be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it's God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For... Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. This is the word of the Lord. Let's sing our next song, Son of God, Eternal Savior. You can kind of think of this entire song as a prayer, asking God to help us see things through this Jesus lens, to know what Jesus has done for us, and then to live life for him.
Let's begin our time focusing on God's word by first joining together in praying. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, for you are our rock. You are our redeemer. Amen. All right. So I don't understand. I don't get this. Can you help me make sure that I'm thinking this through in the right way. Tell me if this makes sense. This guide that God has given us, this way of life that God calls Christians to live, does not match up with the life that I've lived. All right, think about what a kid does when somebody steals a toy from them or pushes them down or calls them a name. Well... You rip that toy right back for yourself. You bounce up and you take them down. Whatever name that they called you, you give it right back to them. Equal level of name calling or or maybe you raise it up for you and you say one of those names that you know you're not really supposed to say. If somebody does something mean to you as a kid, you give it right back to them. You stand up to the bully. You take care of yourself. But I think you also know that it maybe shows even more as you get older that at work, at school, that it's okay to defend yourself. It's okay to stand up for yourself. In fact, gossip and slander flow freely about people that don't like you, right? They are an awful boss. They're a really bad team leader. They give you the worst assignments. They make you work the worst hours in life. So it's okay. You know the fight's coming. You recruit more people over to your side for when the fight's going to happen so that when it comes, you win. You make them look bad. You talk bad about them. Doing things like that for those kind of people, that feels just so right, so natural. And then, did you hear what God actually said? These words, gentleness and respect? I mean, have you met people? <laughs> no, this is a world where there is one side against the other side, and you shout your position so loudly so that the other side has to hear you, and that your loudness means that you're right, that you win. If you don't do that, the other side is going to steamroll you. And they're going to have absolutely no problem with that. So you build yourself up, you make yourself louder, and you win. I mean, if you want to live life in this world, you follow the golden rule, right? You do good to the people who do good to you, to the people who are nice to you. And you go hard against the people who are against you because... If you don't, they're going to take advantage of you, and life isn't going to go so well. Now, this sounds kind of harsh, but this, you know, right? This is the real world. This is the life that I've lived. These are the experiences that I've had. So help me understand this. What exactly is the point of suffering, of sacrificing for people that are going to do nothing good for you? If there is a God, and this is what your God calls you to do, if this is the kind of life that your God calls you to live, help me understand, why should I not feel sorry for you? Because your life, honestly, it's not going to look that great. All right. Let's take a step back. And let's think this through. You can imagine this part of God's word playing out, right, in a real-life situation like that, a real conversation like that. And I think, I think you can kind of understand where the skeptic is coming from. I think you can kind of get their perspective. I, can, I think you can get their mentality. Uh, what God says here through the Apostle Peter, let's face it, this is a challenge. So much so that I think it's worth it for us to go through this list of things another time 
and for you to think through what things you've lived, your life experience, where what we look at just does not make any sense. This is where, Paul, where Peter starts. Be like-minded. Be sympathetic. Love one another. Be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. What things do not look like the world that you know? I mean, unity, sympathy, compassion, love, humility, and then whatever the opposite of payback might be? <laughs> How much of that did you see this week? How much of that did you get to experience? I kind of bet you that this wasn't your experience either. Turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. Instead, I know you live in a world that's been messed up with hate and evil and war. You also live in a world of suffering, and maybe you saw it, suffering that is unearned, undeserved. People that are just in the wrong places, in the wrong times. People whose lives, when you actually get to know the details, kind of make you question what God's plan is. What is God doing with this person in their life? And then this is what Peter says. But even if you should suffer for what is right, you're blessed. Then maybe the hardest for us as Christians, how do we respond to people who are skeptics who question? You do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, for it is better if it's God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. I mean, what makes sense about any of this? <laughs> Gentleness and respect for people who are not going to show you respect for what you think, for how you believe. Unjust suffering is good. You and I can understand where a skeptic is coming from if we look at God's word and we take God's word seriously. But here's the kicker in all this. Picture this conversation, a skeptic talking with the person who wrote this section of God's word. That was Peter, this outspoken leader of Jesus' 12 closest disciples. This guy who walked on the water, who trusted Jesus and boldly acted in faith. The guy who said to Jesus, even if it means I have to die with you, I'm ready to do that. And then the same guy, just a couple hours after that, who rejected him. The same man who stood nearby where Jesus was being condemned to die. And when people asked him, these were his words, woman, I don't know him. Man, I am not one of them. I am not associated with this guy at all. I think you know Jesus, right? No. I don't even know what you're talking about. In the time when Jesus needed support and just somebody to be there with him the most, Peter denied him three times. If a skeptic is uh, having a hard time with this part of God's word at looking at a Christian life and how a Christian lives and what a Christian should do, how much harder if they actually know that Peter did the opposite of those things, that that's the kind of life that Peter lived. And then I think we think about ourselves, you and me, the lives that we live. What kind of impression did you give to the skeptic who was watching your life this week? When would they have seen what God calls a Christian's life to look like? When would they have thought that this guide, this life, that's a nice ideal, but I see somebody and I don't think I see this working out in the real world. 
live life together for Jesus? That hasn't always been what our messed up world has seen from you and me either. But thank God, brothers and sisters in Christ, thank God that Peter is exactly the right kind of person for God to use to write these guides for us. Thank God, because he and what he does really can't answer a skeptic's why, but God can, and God does. How does all of this work? This is where everything comes from in Peter's little section of guiding. This is what God says. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. You see, Jesus died for sinners, and when he rose that first Easter Sunday night, who did he go to be with? Sinners. He proved what his suffering did. He stood with people who misrepresented him. People who rejected him. People who ran away from him and denied him. And with one word, the first people he wanted to be with were those people. With one word, he told them exactly how they should feel, what their relationship with him was going to be. He said to them, peace. Peace be with you. Then for 40 days after that, Jesus associated with those same people and he kept giving them peace. He opened their minds so that they could understand that his suffering was the only way for God to bring people back together with him, for God to actually forgive people's sins. He gave them their mission, that they would be his representatives in this world to live the kind of life that Peter's calling people to live, the forgiveness that he freely and fully gives to sinners is the only answer to the skeptics. Why? It's Jesus and what Jesus has done. And this is mind-blowing for Peter, but maybe more personally for you and me, because you and I are God's answer to people who can't understand this Christian way of life. You and I will live life together for Jesus because when people see what doesn't make sense, they're going to learn about God's unbelievable love for them. Yeah, this is the only way it works. Jesus brings you close to God. Jesus tells you what God thinks about you every time that you open up his word and you dig deeper into this thing. You, brothers and sisters, are at peace. You are forgiven. You are at one with God and with him together. For Christ also suffered for sins once. The righteous for the unrighteous to bring you back together with God. You're not a bad representative. You're not against him. You're not opposed to him. You're with him. How? Because Jesus made you that way. And then knowing that your God who loves you unconditionally, is always going to be there next to you, with you, because of Jesus and what Jesus has done, that makes you see life through this Jesus lens. Grace forms you and molds you and shapes who you are and, and how you look at things. It opens your eyes to all these opportunities that God gives for you to help people see Jesus. It makes you and your life a reflection of, of his unbelievable love, it drives you to live life together for Jesus. And when you do that, this is going to stand out. Think about the impression that this is going to make when you live life together for Jesus. One more time, let's walk back together through God's word and think about what this might look like to a skeptic, to a world that does not understand. Life for Jesus means you work for unity. And not just shallow, high, every once in a while kind of relationships. No deep, real relationships. Messy people working with messy people. Deep unity that starts first in the forgiveness that God has given each and every one of us. 
in knowing that we are part of God's family because God makes us part of his family. Unity that goes over interpersonal relationships and conflicts that we have with one another, that we have in our lives. Unity that shows itself in love and sympathy and compassion and action. Live life together for Jesus first by being united with each other. And then this support and unity is absolutely going to help you when you might be starting to do the toughest thing for Jesus. That is, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. How countercultural <laughs> is that? How well, though, does that reflect God's grace for us? This is where skeptics come face to face with something that will never make sense. Forgiveness and care for people that aren't good to you, that might do the opposite for you, is exactly what living life for Jesus looks like. And when they see that, that's going to leave an impression. Life for Jesus is also going to open up opportunities for you to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason, for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. It's what we're talking about in our Bible study after worship on Sunday mornings. You listen and you learn and you grow in real relationships with people all the while you live a life. It's just pointing them to Jesus. And then when the door opens, you take advantage. You share with them the good news of the hope that Jesus gives you. You share your identity as a forgiven and loved child of God. You tell them that God loves them like that too. Life together for Jesus shows itself in all of this and works through all of this and it will bring more people to him. So, as the skeptic, yeah, this doesn't make sense. This is not the way that the world works. This isn't the life that I've known and lived up to this point. This is different. You Christians, you see Jesus in everything and you live life for Jesus? This is how you answer. After knowing Jesus, after seeing Jesus and what he's done for me, yeah, I can't live life any other way. I live life for Jesus. Amen. Please stand. In response to God's word, we have an opportunity to confess our Christian faith, to say this is what we believe. Words that come from the Bible, that are based on what the Bible says, uh, words today that will come from the Apostles' Creed. Let's say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born together to Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. At uh, this time, we encourage everybody here, please fill out one of our uh, online Connect cards. If you're not connected with Ascension yet, uh, download our Church Center app. There you're going to have opportunities to get connected weekly to lots of good info. Uh, you're also going to have an opportunity to share prayer requests, things that I could pray for you. Uh, put it on there. Know that this week I'll be praying for you that way. After worship, there's also going to be an opportunity at our Welcome Center table for you to sign up for that. There'll be somebody there helping you to sign up for that, too. And uh, guests and visitors, please don't feel obligated to give toward our ministry. But know that what we do here is supported by you. Gospel ministry in Jacksonville, in this area, and through our bigger church body throughout the world. We'll take a minute or two to do this.
Please stand again for prayer. Because we are at one with God, because Jesus has forgiven us and made it his, we have this opportunity and blessing again. Things that are on our hearts and our minds and things going on in our world, we get to bring these things to God. If you ever have anything that you'd like for us to pray for as a whole church, always feel free, text, call, let me know, and we'll get to include those petitions. At the end of every petition that we'll pray today, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to join together, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Lord, you chose to send your son into our world so that you would bring us back together with you. Your undeserved love for us makes us who we are. Let your forgiveness be in us daily through your word and through the sacraments so that we overflow with thanks and live our lives for you in everything we say, think, and do. Lord, in your mercy. God, you call us all to unique lives and give each of us our own opportunities. Remind us that we will serve you in everything we do. Equip us uniquely for the callings that you've given and bless many through us and our different lives. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Heavenly Father, you created us to be together with you and designed us for relationship with each other. Bless our church and our life groups and our interactions with people in our lives with real relationships. Help us to support and encourage each other as we point everyone to your perfect love in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. God, you are compassionate and gracious to all people. Continue to provide the physical needs of people on earth, but be with anyone who is struggling with these needs. Also comfort everyone who is sick or suffering or depressed or lonely. Use us to bless these people around us and the people we meet in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear us also as we bring you our private prayers this morning. And hear us as we join together and we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing song. It's no outsiders. It's a great reminder again of the, the calling that God gives us and that God loves all people in the world. There are no boundaries. We want everyone here. We want everyone to know about Jesus because God wants everyone to know that too.
Good morning again. It's great to have everybody here joining us because again here we get to hear about Jesus, what God has done for us, that we're loved, that we are at one and together with him. All right, a couple different announcements that we're going to run through. Shorter list today actually than other weeks so far since I've been here. Uh, if you haven't downloaded the app yet, make sure to download the app. Great communications, lots of stuff running through that, lots of opportunities for signups through that too. Uh, anytime you need help, please let us know. Uh, you'll be able to see Jason at the Welcome Center. Sign up over there, get connected. We'd love to be able to follow up with you. That way you can shape our ministry a little bit. Uh, other things that you can sign up for through our church center. Uh, last week we restarted our life groups. If you are not connected to one of these, no worries. There are still opportunities. There is still time for this. Uh, different locations throughout the city, around the area too. Uh, it's a blessing. Great opportunity. Get connected. Even if you're not on the app, though, uh, talk to me. Let me know you want to be part of one of these things, and we'll get you connected that way. If you still want to see some of the material that we'll work through, what it looks like, on my desk, uh, the front right corner, uh, feel free to grab one of those sheets. If you have a life that doesn't allow you to meet up for a life group, uh, do it with your family. Do it by yourself this week. The sermon and what we dig into, right, maybe 20-ish minutes, it's a lot of me talking and you listening. Life groups are opportunities to discuss, to chat, to reflect, to dig deeper with each other. Take one of those sheets, do it by yourself, do it with your family this week. If you can't make it to a life group, they'll be printed out for you there. Uh, another thing is I am looking for you, each and every one of you. I want to get to know you personally, personal level, but really I need your help in understanding this congregation, this community a whole lot better, and you're going to be the way that I do that. Uh, this week, I have opportunities tomorrow morning, breakfast, coffee time, let me know. Tomorrow night, dinner time, that spot is open now too. Um, what's the other one? No, I'm mixing up. Uh, Friday morning, coffee, breakfast time too, sign up for these. Otherwise, I'm coming for you, and probably in back, I'm going to ask you personally, hey, let's meet, let's do this, because I want to get to know you. And I need your help with these things. Uh, help me get back up the pace as your pastor who gets to serve here, too. Um, Ash Wednesday, not too long from now, February 22nd. 6.30 p.m. is going to be the timing for that worship service. Uh, if you kind of know Christianity or uh, Christian church, there are different church seasons, we call them. Uh, on the 22nd, we're going to start a new church season of Lent. A church season that focuses in on everything that Jesus has done to win our forgiveness. Every single thing that we needed him to do, he did. And that season kicks off on Ash Wednesday, a great reminder that you and I are nothing. That we fail to live up to God's standards. That we deeply need God's help. And it's, again, going to be a service that reminds us Jesus is everything that we need. We'll have opportunity to kind of carry out a unique tradition among Christians. We'll do what's called the imposition of ashes, where we'll take ashes and we'll physically put them on our hands or on our foreheads to remind us we are nothing. We need God's help. So 22nd, 6.30 p.m., let us know if there's uh, any opportunity that you've got for questions um, about that practice especially. I'd love to dig into that with you if, if you got thoughts about that too. Other things... Now we've got time for coffee, hangout. I promise you, every week I say this, right? I promise you there are people here whose names you don't know, whose faces you don't recognize. Uh, be intentional. Go ask them their name. Go learn about them. Go get to know each other better. Uh, I'm certainly still doing that, and uh, you guys, let's do that all together too. About 10.30-ish, then we'll gather back together here for a Bible study. A great way of God equipping us to live life together for Jesus is learning how to listen better. Today we're going to practice that real life skill. I promise it'll be worth it. Uh, kiddos, there is Sunday school. You'll get to dig into Bible stories all about Jesus and what Jesus has done for us. Other things that I'm missing. All right. I got nothing else. God bless your weeks as you live for him. <laughs>